man who was body slammed by a Chicago police officer is a free man tonight, more than a week after the incident that made national headlines. Sarissa goes along with giving anyone your voter information. Political parties will use it trying to reach you. Hackers might use it trying to scare you. Hundreds of people here just outside the uh, Brooklyn Center Police Department. The fence here, the National Guard right here, keeping a watchful eye on all of this. That Republican senators are trying to figure out their next move with health care reform. The Congressional Budget Office says repealing many Obamacare provisions would lead to an estimated 27 million people uninsured by 2020. South, as far as the eye can see here in New York City, where they prepare for winter all year long. Now, municipalities across the country may have the salt, but they lack many of the dry to get it to the roads where it needs to be. This is the South Bronx, considered the most impoverished congressional district in America. Of the 10 New York City zip codes considered highest risk for evictions, eight are right here. It was the worst kept secret in baseball, but the Chicago Cubs confirmed the rumors today and announced the hiring of David Ross as new manager. Here in the Garden State, the COVID infection rate currently is 3.7 percent. Across the Hudson River, New York State close behind at 3.5, with New York City seeing recently an alarming spike. We're going to let the pictures speak for themselves for the most part, but you can see what's happening here. Riot police clashing with the remaining demonstrators. Well, Tom. It was cold. <laughs> it was. It was. Well, that's quite a pronounced real economy with words. <laughs> I know. I'm Tom Negevin. Jackie and Timon have tonight off. We're starting with breaking news. Three people shot in the south suburbs. Let's get right to Mike Lowe. He's live in Dalton with new information for us tonight. Mike? Charges are pending tonight against a woman in her early 20s accused of running down and killing a 51-year-old woman on the west side. Annie Johnson was struck in the 1600 block of South Homan Avenue around 1 in the morning. Police say the driver was speeding and hit Johnson as she was crossing the street. Bond denied for the man accused of sexually assaulting a teenage girl and repeatedly stabbing her. 19-year-old Isaiah Nevitt faces three felony charges. Prosecutors say he turned himself in because his mother saw a TV report and recognized him from the security camera footage. The National Weather Service posting a beach hazard statement through tomorrow morning. Dangerous swimming conditions from strong rip currents are expected. But as WGN's Dana Rebick tells us, even that isn't keeping everyone out of Lake Michigan. PUSH kicked off its STEAM summer camp program today. The summer enrichment program exposes young people to science, technology, engineering, the arts, and math. The goal is to diversify the ranks of the tech industry and give minority students opportunities they might not otherwise receive. South Florida tonight, at least 21 people injured after an explosion destroyed parts of a shopping mall. Emergency crews rushed to the scene in Plantation. That's just west of Fort Lauderdale. Drug kingpin Joaquin El Chapo Guzman owes the U.S. government $12.6 billion. Federal prosecutors filed a proposal this week stating the sum represents property from his drug-related crimes. One of El Chapo's attorneys says it's insane to think he has that kind of money. A top aide to Iran's supreme leader says his country is ready to begin enriching uranium beyond the level set by the 2015 nuclear deal with world powers. Iran said the four-year-old deal unraveled because Americans directly and Europeans indirectly violated the terms. Democratic presidential hopefuls spoke at the Essence Festival in New Orleans today with Senator Kamala Harris winning the biggest ovations. She's proposing a hundred billion dollars in federal grants to pay for down payments and closing costs for housing. Senator Elizabeth Warren mentioned several of her plans that would tip the economic scales of America away from the wealthy. Actor Kevin Spacey is under investigation over sexual assault allegations in the UK. British investigators have reportedly spoken to Spacey as well as to several men who they, one of Chicago's hottest new restaurants, is putting a focus on the flavors of the Middle East. Galit is packing them in in Lincoln Park and our critic Phil Patel says it's one of the best new arrivals this year. Here's his review. Sarah Crosstown game two tonight. Yeah, it was a little too exciting for what it should have been. Graphic, though. I thought it was just a typo in the tweet. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Who says spelling doesn't count, right? I think it does. It does. <laughs> Thanks. That's the news for this Saturday. And I'm Tom Negevin from Mike and Lauren. All of us here. Thanks for watching. Man of the People with Pat Thomas Sulo is up next. Have a great night. A very busy police precinct here in Harlem. A lot of grief in the air here, as you can well imagine. New York City's mayor just a short time ago laying out what he calls the city's blueprint for safety. 
It's a constant flow of law enforcement outside the 32nd Precinct. Wreaths and flowers in memory of 22-year-old Officer Jason Rivera, on the job just 14 months. Shot and killed while responding to a 911 call Friday night, a domestic dispute between a mother and son. His partner, 27-year-old Wilbert Mora, also shot, hospitalized in critical condition. President Biden tweeting his support over the weekend. New York's mayor, a retired police officer himself, promising action today. We will use every available method to keep our people safe. Five NYPD officers have been shot in the first 21 days of 2022, a number that should be shocking, but police are coming under attack across the country. Last night in the nation's capital, an officer shot and wounded. The suspect fled. Yesterday morning in Houston, a deputy killed during a traffic stop. 47-year-old Corporal Charles Galloway shot multiple times. And in Robertson County, Tennessee, the sheriff's office investigating a mystery involving one of their own. Deputy Savannah Puckett, 22 years old, found fatally shot last night inside her burning home. A suspect arrested after a standoff with the SWAT team. And the method of dealing with this, Nicole, varies from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. But here in New York City, Mayor Eric Adams says a big part of his strategy is going to be trying to stem the tide of illegal guns flowing into the city. About 6,000 taken off the streets in the past year and more keep coming in, he says. Funeral services, meantime, for the fallen officer set for Friday at New York's famed St. Patrick's Cathedral. A lot of activity here right now. It's going to be this way. For many months to come, a presidential visit to Kentucky today and tonight, sources tell News Nation that Senate GOP leader Mitch McConnell will visit Bowling Green on Friday as the search continues for 13 people still missing. Tornado victims, friends and volunteers back in the disaster zone clearing debris. Watched over by the National Guard, Humvees rolling through the streets. Nearby, search and rescue teams work to find those still unaccounted for. A priority right now, 13-year-old Nissa Brown, home when the tornado hit and still missing. No one in her family survived. The recovery taking a toll, even on trained first responders. And you can't help but think about, you know, all of these people who have lost family members. They've lost their pets. They've lost every single possession that they've ever owned. Just outside the disaster zone, a makeshift shelter for those suddenly homeless and still traumatized. Pure fear. Pure fear and darkness. And just scared to death. Dina Lee says her two year old daughter's bedroom was torn right off her house in Bowling Green. They made it out. Some neighbors didn't. There was 15 fatalities and 11 of them were just down the road on Moss Creek Avenue. It breaks my heart because a bunch of those were children and everything as well, you know, and the fact that we were able to still keep our child safe, especially because we were in the direct path of the tornado. At first light, local officials tour a subdivision torn in two by the storm, vowing to come back from this. Right now, we can't comprehend what's happened, but I can tell you, Looking forward, we're going to come out of this a better Bowling Green, a stronger Bowling Green. We are going to arise from the rubble. The number of confirmed dead here now 16. A man involved in the debris removal on this site suffered a fatal heart attack today, and Nicole has been added to the official death toll. Uh, so, so sorry. And they say they're focused on accountability here, Nicole. Uh, prosecutors getting the last word here, rebuttal arguments made today, telling the nearly all-white jury that Aubrey was chased down and killed simply because he was a black man running down the street. Lawyers for the three defendants saying they were attempting a then-legal citizen attack. McMichael, uh, no choice but to open fire with the shotgun he was holding. His father, Gregory, also charged. It was their neighbor also pursuing William Bryan, who recorded the deadly encounter on his phone. All three facing up to life in prison if convicted on the most serious counts they're facing. Prosecutors telling the jury today you can't claim self defense when you're the aggressor. For yelling at yelling at him, threatening to kill him.
and then they come back. I do think that we will come back with a guilty verdict. And I want to leave you with this. Um, God has brought us this far, and he's, and he's not going to fail us now. Amen. We will get justice for Ahmad. So in short, defense lawyers and prosecutors offering very different summations of the same evidence in this courthouse over the last couple of days. Jurors getting about five hours of deliberations in so far. Just to give you a sense of how this is going to go forward, uh, the court is scheduled a half day tomorrow, a day off for Thanksgiving, back to deliberations Friday and into the weekend. Nicole, if the jury needs it. You know, Arudabe, welcome to Rush Hour in New York City, the Moynihan Train Hall. Usually a lot busier at this or really any other time of day. A little bit of a lull right now. What has people a lot more concerned is what Amtrak's projecting for the new year. Not enough people to run the trains when it begins enforcing the federal vaccine mandate. Planes, trains, and in 2022, maybe a whole lot more automobiles. Amtrak is cutting back, and the reason's simple. A COVID-19 vaccine requirement that it warned workers about back in August, calling it then in the best interest of the company and its customers. Even though about 94% of Amtrak employees are already fully vaccinated, on long routes there's a risk of running into crew members who aren't. And right there is the issue. It looks like a lot of their reductions are going to be on their long-haul service. So, you know, New York to New Orleans or New York to Florida. So those trains that everyone was going to kind of disperse themselves on, everyone's not going to be on just the few that they're going to offer. Trouble of a different kind at American Airlines. It's dropping some international flights next summer because of manufacturing problems at Boeing, which won't be able to deliver 13 of its wide-body 787 Dreamliners as expected this winter. Without those planes, the airline's chief revenue officer says in a memo to workers, we simply won't be able to fly as much internationally as we had planned next summer or as we did in summer 2019. And just as a footnote to that, that could actually lead to some uh, fare increases next summer. So something to watch for. As for Amtrak, we're expecting them to announce their service cuts next week, promising to rebook customers as needed. But uh, Ruta Bay, some real concerns about their service level getting back on track. They don't expect that's going to fully happen until next March.